Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject validability of metals and you know that so far we have talked about the effect of the metal properties on the validability and uh, how the validability of different types of the metal systems uh, is affected if they are strengthened by solid solution strengthening, grain refinement, precipitation hardening, transformation hardening, dispersion hardening and uh, uh, how the validability will be affected if a metal system is having the combined effect of uh, these strengthening uh, mechanisms. Uh, now we will be looking uh, into the general aspects related with the validability of the metals and what are the different things that we should look into instead of going into the uh, metal systems. Uh, for example, if uh, we have to identify or we have to uh, study the validability of the metals, uh, we need to see that whenever a weld joint is made, how the weld metal properties and the uh, heat affected zone properties are affected. So like, like the metal, the two parts of metal A are being joined either by the fusion welding or the solid state joining process. Uh, a joint will be produced at the interface. Uh, in case of the fusion welding, it is typically called weld metal and nearby that uh, zone always uh, depending upon the process. Uh, a, a zone which is affected by the heat, zone affected by heat or uh, the, the deformation is produced. In general when the, the zone in the base metal which is being formed due to the effect of heat, it is called heat affected zone. So, we need to consider the, the the properties or we can say the characteristics of both weld metal and the heat affected zone. If the weld metal, so what are the things that we have to look into the weld metal, weld metal properties. So, the first thing is about its soundness. Because soundness, uh, uh, whether it is free from defects and discontinuities or not, and if it is free, then what are its properties in terms of like mechanical properties, corrosion properties, wear properties, or uh, then what are the kind of the residual stress development in the weld metal and accordingly we will be saying whether the weldability of metal from the weld metal point of view is good or, uh, or it is poor. Uh, apart from this uh, the heat affected zone properties are also looked in to see whether the heat affected zone is sound means no cracks uh, and the kind of the residual stresses being uh, present and uh, the kind of the properties it is uh, having in terms of the microstructure, mechanical properties and corrosion properties. Sometimes hardening takes place which leads to the embrittlement, sometimes softening takes place in the heat affected zone which promotes the fracture, unfavorable metallurgical transformation in the, in the heat affected zone lowers the corrosion resistance and all these things happen due to the unfavorable metallurgical transformations means the development of microstructure. So, if we talk in the beginning about the weld metal. Uh, the weldability when we are looking in weldability of metal when we are looking into the weld metal related aspects. So, a weld joint of a given metal can be produced just say 
either by fusing the faint surfaces and so the metallurgical continuity is realized after the solidification. In this case no external metal is added. Uh, this uh, in this case there is no almost no change in composition of weld metal. So, it is expected that this kind of the weld metal will have uniformity in composition like starting from uh, base metal across the weld metal again into the base metal. So, there should be uniformity in composition of the base metal, but as far as the microstructure is concerned there can be lot of heterogeneity because the base metal may have the rot structure means the, the structure having the effect of the, the manufacturing processes if it is like rolling or forging then those effects will be there in the microstructure and if it is the if it has been made by the casting then it will have the dendritic structure. Uh, but as soon as we approach or we reach around the heat affected zone there we will see the various regions like partially refined heat affected zone, refined heat affected zone, coarse grained heat affected zone, coarse grained heat affected zone and then in the well metal of course we will have we may have the planar grain structure then cellular grain structure, then dendritic grain structure and equaxed and likewise the similar kind of the structural variation will be on the opposite side. So, despite of having the same composition since the melting has taken place so subsequent solidification and the heat affected zone has experienced the weld thermal cycle. So, it will also be having the different microstructural changes. So, despite of uh, no change in the chemical composition of the weld metal whenever a base metal is welded by the fusion welding process there is always a structural variation and depending upon the characteristics of the metal there can be softening or there can be hardening depending upon the kind of the metallurgical transformations which are taking place in the weld zone. For example, like the uh, the most of the metals like precipitation hardenable systems, work hardenable systems and dispersion hardened systems when they are welded by the fusion welding process mostly we see even for the uh, autogenous welding where no change in chemical composition of the weld metal is taking place just the faint surfaces are fused the, the weld metal is found to be of the poorer mechanical properties due to the unfavorable metallurgical transformations as compared to the uh, base metal. Uh, now, we will see uh, that uh, sometimes uh, the autogenous welding is not possible due to the difficulties associated with the through thickness penetration like uh, by using the laser welding and electron beam welding may, maybe we can uh, weld the thicker sheets uh, and realize the through thickness penetration to ensure that uh, the faint surfaces are brought to the molten state. But uh, still in those cases even, even without change in uh, composition lot of structural modification in the weld metal uh, results in the change in mechanical properties and which may be in form of hardening or softening of the weld metal. But sometimes it becomes mandatory to prepare the edges of the plates to be welded through the suitable edge preparation and in that case it is required to fill up this gap uh, using the suitable filler and in that case we have to use some kind of the filler. So, consumable electrode welding processes are used or in uh, like non-consumable uh, welding processes like gas tungsten arc welding plasma arc welding we have to use filler from uh, outside. So, this filler or the consumable electrode can be of the two types. So, filler or the electrode composition uh, can be almost similar to that of the base metal or it can be completely different. 
uh, than the base metal. So, uh, most of the cases when there are no major metallurgical issues and the weldability issues related with the base metal, then mostly the matching filler or the electrode metal is used. But if you want to address some specific technological aspects related with the poor weldability of the base metal, then we choose the dissimilar or completely different uh, filler metal or the electrode. Uh, like say uh, those high carbon, high carbon steel uh, plates sometimes welded using the austenitic stainless steel or nickel uh, based fillers uh, in order to uh, overcome the issues related with the uh, high hardenability lower down the residual stresses reduce the cracking tendency or what we want that the weld metal is having the better uh, combination of the properties than the base metal. So, in that case we choose the suitable filler which will offer us the required combination of the properties which may be in terms of the good corrosion resistance, in terms of the uh, required uh, the tensile properties uh, of the weld metal. So, uh, or it is having the required wear resistance. So, we can choose the filler or the electrode composition suitably so that it is having the required set of the properties for the weld metal. Uh, so, if we can in considering this aspect uh, uh, where at least we have the flexibility in case of the fusion welding processes where consumable either consumable electrode is used or the filler is used from outside we have the flexibility to select the suitable filler so that the weld metal composition can be regulated accordingly in order to have the required microstructure mechanical properties corrosion resistance wear resistance but so that allows us to use either similar or the dissimilar metals uh, to to satisfy the requirement of the weld metal properties uh, but uh, if we talk of the heat affected zone related aspects, then certainly whenever heat is supplied to facilitate the fusion of the fing surfaces, one uh, a zone near the, the weld metal is formed and this heat affected zone, we cannot do much to eliminate the, the heat affected zone because in fusion welding processes, it is always there whenever heat is supplied to ensure the fusion of the fing surfaces, a heat affected zone is formed. Uh, size of the heat affected zone certainly can be reduced by using the high energy density welding processes like laser beam or electron beam, but this zone will still be there. Size of the or the width of the heat affected zone certainly can be reduced. So, uh, from the weldability point of view, we have the luxury at least in case of the welding of the thick plates where uh, we can use the filler or the electrode of one or other composition in order to adjust the properties of the weld metal. Certainly, we can have a situation where either the corrosion resistance or the tensile properties of the base metal are very poor like corrosion resistance of the base metal in terms of the MPY is just like 5 MPY. This is the typical unit to show the corrosion uh, resistance or corrosion behavior of the material and say tensile properties in terms of the yield strength is just 300 MPA and the percentage elongation is just say 20 percent. So, if we want that our the weld metal is of the much better properties, then accordingly we can choose the suitable filler metal or the electrode offering us the much better corrosion resistance like CR is having 
1.5 MPY. Uh, yield strength is of 500 MPA and the percentage elongation is 30 percent. So, this kind of the flexibility is available to regulate the weld metal properties at least with the consumable welding processes or those processes where we can choose the filler metal of either similar composition or of the dissimilar composition. There are some issues uh, with the autogenous welding process as far as the weldability is concerned like a metal which uh, is uh, having the solidification temperature range of just 10 degree. Then the issues related with the weld metal are very limited especially with regard to the solidification cracking. But when the solidification temperature range becomes very wide then even the uh, autogenous welding does not help to eliminate solidification temperature range is very high like say 150 degree centigrade. Then uh, even simple fusion welding, uh, autogenous welding where just uh, the fing surfaces are brought to the molten state and subsequent solidification sometimes lead to the solidification cracks at the center of the weld. So, in order to avoid the weldability issues related with the higher solidification temperature range, sometimes the autogenous welding is avoided and we try to weld. The, the base metal using the suitable filler so that the solidification temperature range can be uh, reduced uh, say from 150 to 25 degree centigrade. In that case the solidification cracking tendency uh, will be reduced with the, because of the reduction in the solidification temperature range. The mechanism of the solidification cracking I will be talking subsequently. But uh, what I am saying is uh, like direct melting of the base metal may also not be all may not always be feasible if the metal is having the wider solidification temperature range or uh, it is due to the high hardenability it is leading to the embrittlement of the weld metal. So, it will be better to use the, uh, the electrode or the filler metal of the lower hardenability uh, like the austenitic stainless steel or the low carbon steels filler can be used. So, it may not always be favorable uh, to, uh, to have the autogenous weld uh, through the melting of the fing surfaces and subsequent solidification of the weld metal development for producing a weld joint. Uh, so, it is uh, sometimes it is good to have uh, the fillers and the electrodes either of the matching characteristics or of the completely different characteristics. Uh, as, as I have said, uh, we have the option to regulate or adjust the composition as well as the well metal properties by choosing either the matching filler metal or of the completely different kind of filler metal so that the, the weldability related issues of the base metal can be um, can be reduced, but we cannot do much uh, as far as the heat affected zone development is concerned because it is directly affected by the amount of heat being supplied for for fusion of fing surfaces. So, uh, like low energy density processes like gas welding or shielded metal arc welding. This, uh, these processes will be supplying the higher heat, higher amount of heat. So, heat input will be more and that in turn will be leading to the wider heat affected zone. So, uh, in order to reduce the, uh, the adverse effects uh, associated to the heat affected zone, it is always favorable to work with the high energy density processes like electron beam welding or the laser welding or the plasma arc welding. These processes will require lesser heat input. So, the, the heat affected zone HAJ width in that case is reduced and that uh, in turn will help in addressing the issues uh, to some extent which are associated with the heat affected zone. So, uh, heat affected zone uh, uh, issues uh, cannot be eliminated, but certainly they can be uh, 
uh, reduced and it, it to a great extent means the HAZ characteristics to a great extent uh, depends upon the kind of well thermal cycle being experienced by the base metal in the heat affected zone. Like heat affected zone is the zone up to uh, it is the zone or the width up to which the base metal properties are being affected uh, metallurgically and the mechanically. So, that width uh, is called heat affected zone and it will directly depend upon the, the amount of heat being supplied heat input. So, if we in the heat HAZ if we take the three different locations 1, 2, 3 then each location will be showing us the different world thermal cycle which means the different peak temperatures and the different cooling rates. So, heating rate is high if the point this is for point 1, point 2 and point 3. So, the, we will see that peak temperature is decreasing and it is taking longer time to reach the peak temperature that is what we can see the shift uh, uh, towards the right this is time scale and, uh, and this is showing the temperature and this is what is typically called well thermal cycle. Well thermal cycle to a great extent affects the HAZ characteristics whether it will be causing the uh, means which kind of the transformation in the HAZ will be taking place and uh, whether it will be causing the softening or the hardening of the heat affected zone development of the residual stresses or cracking tendency accordingly. Uh, embrittlement also is caused by these uh, HAZ transformation. There are ways to regulate the uh, weld thermal cycles associated with the heat affected zone during the welding process and for that purpose we use preheat. Preheating will be increasing the, the peak temperature of a particular location, but it will be reducing the cooling rate being experienced. So, so preheating uh, of the base metal during the welding will help to change the weld thermal cycle favorably. However, it may increase the HAZ width but it will reduce the cooling rates. Since the cooling rate especially in welding of his steels are more troublesome and that is why it may be considered that preheating sometimes help in reducing the residual stress development and it also helps in reducing the cracking tendency, reducing the embrittlement uh, as far as the heat affected zone is concerned and this happens through the control over the unfavorable metallurgical transformations. In some of the processes what we see that the thermo mechanically affected zone is also formed. This is the typical characteristic of the processes where the plastic deformation, controlled plastic deformation is used for welding purpose. So, all those solid state joining processes like friction welding, friction stir welding, ultrasonic welding, explosive welding in all these welding processes localized uh, in these two processes macro scale plastic deformation is used and while in uh, these two processes ultrasonic and uh, explosive welding process micro scale plastic deformation is used. So, whenever this kind of deformation occurs we will notice that at the interface, interface is deformed like this. So, this kind of the deformation at the interface this will be leading to the formation of uh, a zone which will be having the effect of deformation as well as heat and that is why it is called thermo mechanically affected zone. So, this is the typical characteristics of the ultrasonic welding and the explosive welding, explosive welding, but in case of the friction stir welding the complete recrystallization of the weld nugget uh, takes place while next to the weld nugget uh, we find a very little zone uh, which will be having the effect of the 
the heat as well as the deformation. So, the zone which is completely deformed, fractured, refined is called weld nugget in case of the FSW, while the zone next to the, uh, the weld nugget is the uh, zone which experiences both effect of heat and effect of the deformation. So, that is why it is called thermo mechanically affected zone. This zone is very narrow and thereafter a region is formed which is affected only by the, uh, the heat being transferred from the weld nugget to the base metal. So, the heat affected zone. So, sometimes we get the thermo mechanically affected zone apart from the heat affected zone also. So, now uh, we know that heat affected zone which experiences various weld thermal cycles as per the metal system uh, it may experience the recovery and recrystallization in case of the work hardening metals, grain refined metals, dispersion hardened metals, even transformation hardened metals, a solid solution strengthened metals. So, this is very common that like the heat affected zone due to the weld thermal cycle will be experiencing the recovery as well as recrystallization. But uh, thereafter the metallurgical transformations, metallurgical transformations in the heat affected zone uh, like in form of the uh, reversion or dissolution of the precipitates or uh, the transformation in form of uh, like uh, ferrite and perlite transformation into the martensite or bennite. These will be uh, so the reversion and dissolution will be causing the softening while the transformation hardening will be causing the hardening of the heat affected zone. Sometimes so that will depend upon the kind of the strengthening mechanism which is involved. Apart from these uh, the heat affected zone also experiences in case of the fusion welding processes heat affected zone experiences the tensile residual stresses. So, if the metal system is hard, uh, brittle, low, duct, low percentage elongation, then tensile residual stresses uh, sometimes leads to the cracking uh, in the uh, heat affected zone. Uh, it also leads to the loss of toughness. So, the, so, it is important uh, more to consider the way by which heat affected zone properties are being affected due to the, uh, uh, the weld thermal cycle being imposed during the welding to assess the validability of the metal. Since uh, the validability of the metals considers the properties of the weld metal as well as the heat affected zone. So, we need to consider the three aspects whether the weld metal is clean or not. Clean means it is free from the slag or the flux inclusions or not. That will depend upon the kind of the affinity a weld metal is having with the with atmospheric gases. The metals which are having the greater affinity with the atmospheric gases, there will be greater tendency for formation of the oxides and nitrides and so to take care of them more slag is being formed and uh, increased amount of the slag formation means increased tendency for their entrapment in the weld metal and that in turn will be reducing the cleanliness of the weld metal. So, those metals which have less affinity to the uh, atmospheric gases, they will be cleaner and they will pose lesser issues related with the validability. Likewise, 
the heat affected zone, the way by which heat affected zone properties are affected like there are some of the metals which are not much affected by the heat of the welding in the heat affected zone. So, they will be offering the better weldability as compared to the metal systems which either experience the softening or the hardening or increased cracking tendency or reduced corrosion resistance. So, the if the weld uh, if the heat affected zone properties are being adversely affected then they will experience the or they will be um, uh, uh, having the lower validability as compared to the others whose properties are not much adversely affected due to the heat being applied during the welding. Likewise the weld discontinuities, weld discontinuities can happen in the heat affected zone as well as in the weld metal. So, in the weld metal there can be inclusions there can be porosity uh, while in uh, there can be the solidification cracks uh, while in the heat affected zone there can be liquation cracking, there can be underweed cracking, there can be lamellar tearing. So, there are various types of the crackings which can occur uh, in the weld metal as well as in the heat affected zone and which can reduce the weldability of the metal. So, what we have to see for uh, for assessing the weldability of the metal is you have to see how clean the weld metal is, how the HAZ properties are effect being affected and the kind of the discontinuities uh, being formed when a metal is welded so that we can have the fair idea about the weldability of metal. So, now we will summarize this presentation. In this presentation we have seen that uh, the what are the different uh, aspects that we should look into to assess the weldability of the metals and these are there are two main areas uh, as far as the property consideration is uh, involved in uh, assessing the weldability one is the properties of the weld metal and another is about the properties of the heat affected zone apart from the cleanliness and the discontinuity uh, cleanliness of the weld metal and the discontinuities uh, formation in the weld metal as well as heat affected zone and the heat affected zone properties. Thank you for your attention.